I never expected to have that kind of effect or my story to have that kind of effect, but it makes me feel so grateful that I did it. Everything I wanted to come from it came and that was just to know that I help people. All they did was just listen and they just gained something out of it. Welcome to the One Girl Revolution podcast. It's your girl, Kate here. On this week's episode of the One Girl Revolution podcast, we welcome Jennifer Faison. Jennifer is an Emmy award-winning producer. She's produced shows like Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, Judge Judy, and most recently Vanderpump Villa. But the reason I wanted to have her on this podcast is not because of her incredible career, but it's because she is truly a One Girl Revolution who is raising up an army. Jennifer is the host of the number one podcast, Betrayal, on iHeartRadio and wherever you listen to podcasts, and the docu-series on Hulu, Betrayal, The Perfect Husband, which are both based on her own real-life fairy tale gone horribly wrong. And she's turned it into a podcast and a docu-series and a cautionary tale for others, and a platform that is elevating other women's voices and their stories to spread awareness and to protect other women. Support your sisters, protect your sisters, and do whatever you can. After 20 years apart, Jennifer reconnected with her college sweetheart, Spencer. He was a two-time teacher of the year, and Jen was convinced she married the perfect husband as were so many other people, that he was the perfect husband. They believed that. On June 1st, 2018, that all changed. Jennifer came home to find Spencer holding a search warrant. He had sexually assaulted one of his students. In the days that followed Spencer's arrest, Jennifer uncovered a dark secret life her husband had been living during their entire marriage. His actions shook a community, devastated his wife, and sent Spencer to prison. Climbing out of the devastation would be a journey that Jen never could have imagined. You'll hear her story, her journey to revealing the truth, and all that she's doing, all that she's done, and all that she's doing to bring other stories like hers to light and to fight for justice and truth in our world. Here's my conversation with the lovely Jennifer Faison. Jennifer, welcome to the One Girl Revolution podcast. Thank you, Kate. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to have you on to share your story, to talk about just so many of the different chapters of your life. But we got connected through our mutual dear friend, Shannon Henry. And a couple of weeks ago, she was like, you and Jennifer just need to know each other. And you and I very quickly got on a phone call and I felt like I have known you for forever. Um, So really, this is just such an honor to have you on the podcast to share a little bit about your own story. And so you turned a portion of your story. And I say that on purpose because I don't believe that we're always, that we should be defined by something that happened to us or one portion of our story, but you turned a portion of your story into a podcast that then became a number one podcast and then was just signed for a third season. So we're going to talk about that. And then the first season of your story ended up getting picked up by Hulu for a docu-series, and then that just got picked up for a second season. So you have so many incredible things going on, and I want to talk about all of that. But first of all, congratulations on all the success. But secondly, thank you for all that you're doing to open up opportunities for women to share their stories as well. Oh, thank you. That That's all I care about, really. And it's you- just encouraging people. Yeah. And it's so beautiful too, when we share our stories, you and I really connected over this. When we share our stories, oftentimes it gives other people the courage to stand up and share their stories. And it's not always the difficult things, right? It's not like Shannon Henry's story, you know, being a survivor and sharing her story. It doesn't always have to be the the dark and difficult things. Sometimes just us sharing our story, somebody might say, oh, I noticed this about my own story, a positive mm-hmm. thing. And so it's so important for each and every one of us to find opportunities to share our stories. And you, you're just doing that every single day. And (laughs) I'm so excited to have you on to share your story on this podcast with our audience. So before we get into the great work that you're doing, I would love to rewind and have you share just a little bit about your, your own story growing up a little bit about who you are, where you're from and your life journey. 
I grew up in the South when I was young. And um, so that kind of shaped, I think, a little bit of of my personality, you know, that that kind waving to strangers, you know, as you walk by them and all of that. Um, and I ended up returning to the South. That's where I'm living now. And I love it. I, I'm in this small town where everybody knows everybody and you can't take a walk without it taking twice as long as normal because y- you stop and see a hundred people. So it's just interesting where life kind of takes you and brings you back. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of get spit out into the world and figure out what you want to do and then it it has this way of just bringing you back around to what's important while still keeping all of that other stuff that you work so hard for. So I moved out to LA when I was 27, I believe. I loved television ever since I was young, loved it, and just knew I wanted to work in it, but not sure exactly what it was I wanted to do. So I went out there and I know everybody thought I was crazy. I didn't have a job. It's one of those stories, you know, you go out with just what you can fit in your car and, and I just... I have this perseverance. I just don't, I don't assume people are going to say no right away. You know, I want to try everything. Nobody can say, no, you can't, you're never going to be able to do this. You know, if I'm going to try it, there's a chance it might could happen. And I think I've, you know, proved, proved some people wrong before. Um, But yeah, I've been in television now for a little over, 20 years. And I absolutely love what I do when I am out in the field. I I work as a producer in reality TV, lots of renovation shows and and things like that. But um, being out in the field on the ground with everybody and the, the chaos and the hustle and bustle of everybody and how this one big team comes together to make a show Um, And the relationships that are established within that show as well, whether it's the cast or the crew, you know, it's just it's like family usually when you go out there. So I think what happened was when I went through what I did with my ex-husband, I started writing because I believe writing is such a great tool to help you sort out your thoughts, sort out your feelings, just get them on a piece of paper, get them out of your body, you know? And it it just takes some of the edge off, it seems. So I think because of my experience in the entertainment world, I realized, you know, I could tell this story on a bigger platform and it might help some other people, just like some of the other stories I've told about other people I've worked with on shows. Yeah. So I just really believe that power in storytelling. Well, and I'm sure that so many of the experiences you had in production, just working on TV and kind of doing whatever you're told, sometimes production can be that where you're like, okay, uh, Jennifer, we just need you to go do X, Y, or Z. And like learning, especially as a young person, and then like growing into that career that all kind of teed you up for all the work that you're doing now. And I love looking at the chapters of our stories, how sometimes we don't know. And I'm glad there's so many things in my own story where I'm like, I'm glad I didn't know that I was going to go through that. I'm glad that Mm -hmm. it just sort of happened and I went through it. But then I look back and reflect on the things that happened, even as a child, things that I experienced or in college or throughout different chapters of my career. And I'm like, oh, all of those things led me to where I am now. And they sort Mm -hmm. of kind of built up this confidence, built up this courage because the things that you have done, definitely like moving to LA um, and just trying to see if you can get into television. There are so many people that don't even try or they're Mm -hmm. afraid of failure. And I just am a firm believer that if you have something like that on your heart to just go and do it and try. And that's the same thing with writing or doing a podcast is like, just try and just see where try. It goes. You know, you don't know. I mean, I, I know my mom probably thinks I'm crazy, but I told her yesterday, I said, yeah, I told my agent that I would love to be on dancing with the stars. And he called them 
and left a message basically saying, oh, my client Jennifer would love to be on Dancing with the Stars. Now, do I ever think in a million years they would cast me on that show? No. But why not go for it? Right. Throw things out there and see if they stick. The worst that can happen is they come back and say no, Mm -hmm. you know, and okay, well, at least I know now. I'm not always wondering. Right. Well, and they should have you on. And also, I know I mentioned (laughs) to you on the phone, I love Bobby Bones, who's on the radio. Mm -hmm. And he was on Dancing with the Stars years ago. Terrible dancer. He would admit it himself. And people were like, he's never going to win. He won Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. I mean, he has so many great fans. He had so many people that supported him. And I'm sure that you would get the same because you have so much listenership and so many people that love and support you. But yeah, he... He just tried. He was the same way. He was like, I always thought maybe I could be on it. I have two left feet. I'm never going to win. And then everybody rallied around him. And maybe it's that that story of, um, you know, the the unlikely hero that Mm -hmm. people just jumped on and supported him. But I hope that you get to be on Dancing with the Stars. (laughs) And I hope that in that case, like, I'm going to have to come out to LA to see you perform. (laughs) Yes. Yes, please. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. But, you know, again, I, I doubt I would ever get cast on it. But it's just an example of... Why not shoot really high? Mm-hmm. Why not dream big? Mm-hmm. You never know what's going to happen. And I learned something recently about um, looking for those open doors. Now, whether you believe in God or a higher power or spirit, whatever it is, I believe that, you know, somebody's kind of opening those doors for us a little bit. It's up to us on whether or not we walk through them and we take a leap of faith. But I just, I'm a strong believer in taking every opportunity that you can. Yeah, well, you have done that and you just continue to do that. And you're such an example to all of us too, to just take chances and put ourselves out there. So I want to talk about you going from, so you're working in production, you're working Mm -hmm. on all these TV shows and you reconnect with an old boyfriend, Spencer from college. Tell me about like your career and everything that's going on. And then how did you two reconnect? Well, I was actually in New York City working on a show for Bravo, and it was a last minute thing. Um, I was flown there to help out with the show, and he had reached out to me like a month prior, just saying, hey, I'm going to be up in New York. You know, I lived in L.A. He was in Atlanta. There was no way I was going to be in New York at the same time. And then it just happened. And, you know, you talk about those doors opening. That's what I thought this was. You know, I walked in and re-met my college sweetheart, Spencer, and everything just felt right in the world. It was like, okay, this is what I was waiting for. And I waited a long time. I didn't get married until I was 42 because I really, really believe in what marriage stands for and kind of, uh, this isn't the right word, but the confinements that it puts you in with your partner, you know, it makes, to me, it makes you a family. It immediately connects you. It's like you're legally bound now when you're married. And, you know, reconnecting with him after we had dated in college, it just, it felt so familiar. And he was familiar and he was familiar to my family and just as lovely as ever. So there were no red flags. It was it was a door opening. I really do believe that. Now, it didn't lead to what I thought it was going to lead to, but I still, I don't have any regrets. Yeah. Well, and I love the aspect of your story. Like the fact that you weren't, didn't get married until you were 42. I was 37 when I got married. And I think that it's so important for us to talk about those aspects of our, our stories too, um, because it is so important to marry the right person. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's not right. And obviously like your, your story kind of 
unlocks a whole different side of things that sometimes we think we know someone and it, they turn out to be something that we we didn't even recognize in our relationship with them. But there's so much pressure on people, but I feel like especially women to get married and just do the thing and be done with it. But life is full of many chapters. And so it's important to just trust the journey too. And I love that you call them chapters because that's what I look at them like as, as as well. Our life is a book and there's just chapters in it and some are great and some have loss in them. And we keep reading though. You keep going because you don't just stop. You know, you, you want to find out what happens at the end because mm -hmm. we have no idea what's in store for any of us. I had no idea that my husband was going to turn out to be somebody who was pretty sick. I would say, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, you know, having, gosh, you can't call it a relationship, um, sexually assaulting multiple times a high school student and lying to this person and manipulating them that that's not an okay person. And it's certainly not somebody that I would ever think that I would have chosen. But to be honest, there weren't red flags in my relationship. I have only good memories from my relationship, which is so crazy to say. Um, it certainly wasn't perfect, but it was still a good time in my life. It was changing and evolving and growing as a person and probably preparing me for something I, I didn't know that was to come, but it happened and I have no regrets whatsoever. None. We are so much more resilient than we ever, ever know until we're put in a situation where we have to figure that out for ourselves. If you want to be a part of the revolution and support the work we're doing to uplift women's voices and their stories, please consider donating to our 501c3 nonprofit organization. Every dollar goes right back into the work that we're doing and will allow us to tell even more stories of inspiring women and girls to inspire and empower the next generation. Donate today at onegirlrevolution.com. That's the number one girlrevolution.com. Women are stronger than we can even imagine and more resilient. Yes. And I love these stories of, and we all have that in us, mm -hmm. right? We don't realize how strong we are until we're in a difficult situation or That's until right. life throws a curveball, which in your mm -hmm. case, total curveball that you weren't expecting. Because here Spencer is the perfect husband, quote unquote. Right. And <laughs> he's doing all these amazing things for you and leaving notes on the on the coffee pot and writing you letters. And whenever you're traveling for work, he's like going out of his way. I remember listening to you telling stories about him and being like, all men should like learn something from Spencer. Like, mm -hmm. oh, they, But in reality, he was covering up so much. So, so much. When you're, so you're, you're married and then there's kind of this, this moment where it all comes crashing down and you realize that he wasn't the person that you thought. And then I know what followed was so many other different things that happened and you start unraveling this whole, um, storyline that you didn't even, couldn't even have imagined. I couldn't right. even, you know, a TV show couldn't even, yeah. write <laughs> what ended up happening. So tell me about that moment that you realized that Spencer wasn't that person and then what followed? You know, it's interesting. That moment didn't happen right away for me. I came home and the police then came to our house and arrested him um, for sexually assaulting a student. And I still in my mind was grappling with, okay, wait, if he did this, there there must be some reason for logical explanation. He's not a bad person is all I could keep thinking and telling other people. Like, I, I know it looks bad, but he's a good person. And it took me a long time and, and a lot of heartbreak. You know, yes, this was something horrendous and awful, 
but I couldn't separate myself from being someone who was in love with this person, being a wife of this person, a stepmom to his children. You know, we had been together for seven years. It it was, it was life, you know, surely this couldn't be happening. And so like anyone who goes through a, a big breakup or, you know, whatever you want to call it, I was heartbroken for a very, very long time. And even knowing what I knew didn't just take away the pain. You know, it it took a lot of kind of assessing everything that he had done and really diving deep into who this person was. I was fortunate that I was able to get into his emails because I learned so much. And, you know, some people might say, well, why didn't you just stop looking at everything? Well, I was searching for answers. You know, suddenly this person that I thought I knew better in the world was somebody else. And I need to I needed to figure out who is he? How could he treat me one way and treat 60 other women just horribly? Like they're just objects and just there to be used. So it took a long time, you know, to figure out who it was or who he was for sure. And with that manipulation and deceit and all those things, and I'm sure that one piece of evidence led to another and you start like mm -hmm. realize uncovering the, all these different things. And I'm sure even looking at dates of things and being like, oh my gosh, like I was with him or yes. like seeing all these different facets of it. And that's what I love that you walk through all this unfolding in the podcast and in the Hulu series so people can follow along with all these different things and you're mm -hmm. piecing things together. And then also he was doing it to so many other people too, like your family and friends and people were like, no, 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 he couldn't do that. And what I'm starting to realize too, Jennifer, this is so sad to even say, but it's worth saying and it's important to say is there are so many people in our world like this yes. you know, who may not be exactly like Spencer or may not do it to the degree of Spencer, but we need to be so thoughtful and careful and cautious and know how to look for yeah. these signs. I mean, he wasn't even like giving you signs, but like in retrospect, I'm sure that there are things that you're like, oh, I wish I had seen that. Or maybe I could have seen that. There's always these shoulda, woulda, couldas, but um, there are bad people like this in the world. Yeah. And we need to be aware of them. Yes. And it's the ones that are hiding in plain sight that are, I believe, the scariest. We can warn kids and other people about, you know, the predators and what they might look like and what they might do. But when it's somebody who is really, really good at hiding that piece of them and manipulating enough people to be able to get away with it, I don't know. How do you teach somebody about that? I think it's talking about the stories and talking about the language that he used with people, because I think that sets the example for what to kind of have red flags for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And social media has been such a great gift for connecting people. But I think about that with your story and with so many others, it's also become this avenue for covering up so much, you know, even yeah. I know families that don't allow their kids to be on Snapchat anymore because somebody could send them something and it would disappear. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, this is also an opportunity for parents to be engaged or to, to say for parents to be engaged in what's going on, but also for adults, you know, here, here we are adults and we've, we've all had situations like this, whether we recognize it or not, mm -hmm. again, maybe not to this degree, but we've had people who there are manipulative people in everybody's life, you know, yes. there are deceitful people. And so being able to recognize those signs. And like you said, it's so important for stories like yours to be told so that other people can just be aware and be thoughtful and ask questions too. Mm -hmm. I love that we are in a time right now where people are opening up more about their own personal stories and their struggles. 
whether it's a celebrity or just, you know, a regular person opening up these conversations, it, it just, oh my goodness, what a world, you know, to have your eyes open to so many moments in somebody else's life where you can relate and say, oh my gosh, I felt that way before too. Look, she's still alive. You know, she made mm -hmm. it like she lived through it. So maybe I can too. Yeah. And I think it's just, you know, just trying to remind people that they have so much more strength inside of them that they'll ever realize until, you know, they might have to go through a really hard time. Yeah. And I love what you said just about people sharing even these difficult things that we've experienced because for so long there was like this shame. And I think yes. that still pops up on social media where it's like, you look at social media and everybody has these perfectly curated relationships and perfectly curated families. All the kids like are sitting perfectly in a corner to, for the photo and they're all dressed the same. And that's not the reality, right? The reality is each and every one of us have things in our lives. And there's a shame that comes with like, I should have seen, I should have mm -hmm. known. And it's like, well, maybe you just didn't see the things or maybe this person in Spencer's that he just is a master manipulator. He was just that so good many people. And then mm -hmm. it makes you start to think, I'm sure there were moments where you were like, am I the crazy one? Right. Like, am I, and that's probably part of what let, I imagine that's what led you on this, like, um, quest for answers. It's like, am I crazy? Like maybe Spencer's the, the good one. And I'm yeah. the, like, I'm the one. It's how do you explain this? And is it my fault? You know, did I do something? That was another thing I was searching for. Any little clue as to why or how he could have done this to me? Was it was it something in our marriage? Was it me? Was it and and I realized, thankfully, that it wasn't. It wasn't me. There weren't all of these emails complaining about what a bitchy, ugly wife he had. You know, he didn't really talk about me. He kept it very, very separate. And I think that's another thing to help people realize that it's not them. You know, my friend, Dr. Romani, just came out with a book called It's Not You. And... I want to wear a t-shirt around that just says that. So somebody can read it and say, oh, okay, good. It's not me. Because yeah, there are people out there that try to make us feel like we're the crazy ones. And I love Dr. Romani and I've been following everything that she's doing because it is important. And that's such an important point mm -hmm. that you brought up because women, a lot of times we, we just take, we take the weight of the world on our shoulders. And when something is wrong or something happens in our life, a lot of times we're the, the first thing we think about which is so sad is, well, what did I do? Right. Somebody right. doesn't invite you to a party. Some girlfriend doesn't invite you to a party or somebody doesn't ask you, you're dating somebody and they, they don't want to date you anymore. Well, what did I do? And the mm -hmm. reality is, is a lot of times it's not you. And so I That's love right. Dr. Romney. Cause she's like, no, you need to flip that around. Stop thinking that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for sure, we can always be better. You know, maybe there are things that, that we did that led to it, but that should not be our first impulse. No, no. And you talked about shame. You know, that's another thing that I know for me, I carried around with me. It was shame that my husband did something so horrible that he got arrested for it. Um, the shame that my husband cheated on me, you know, with all these other women. Um, there's, you know, you I walk around town and, you know, people know who I am because it was on the news. There's just a lot of shame that comes with it. But when you own your story, when you it's like taking back that power by telling your side of the story from your perception it just, it gives you, it gives you power. It gives you strength to remind yourself that you weren't the, the person that hurt people in this situation. It was somebody else. We don't have to go into the whole story. People can listen to the podcast to find out more about what happens to Spencer, but he ends up going to prison. Mm -hmm. And what was it? I know you're like writing, you're doing all this research, piecing things together. The case is going on. He goes on to prison. 
what was it that made you think I need to turn this into something like maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's something. What was that? I don't know, Kate. I'll, I'll be honest. I just knew I had, I had to get it out of me. I had to tell the story. I started writing and it, it, it released something in me. It took off some of the weight that this whole situation um, had put on me. And so I think, I, I don't know. I just knew I needed to tell the story. I don't know exactly what my motivation was at the time, except I knew that if I could tell it, maybe somebody else would hear it and gain something from it or see something in themselves and it give them hope that yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. That podcast took us three years to finish. I was a different person from when I started it until the end. And Andrea, the host, could could tell you that. You know, I I I'll never forget that first time in the studio. I was like just shy, timid, just mousy. Just uh, what do I do? Do you want me to just start talking? you know, weeping all the time. And then I just started gaining strength back a little by little. That's the power of us telling our stories. Yes, too. it is. And creating these spaces. That's what this podcast is all about. That's what your podcast is all about. Now that you're telling other stories too, but it's so important for us to find opportunities to share our stories because we can be vulnerable and that's okay too, right? Yes. To be oh my gosh. from- uh, a, a place of not being empowered, but it's through storytelling. It's through sharing our stories, but also hearing other people's stories that we can really step into our rightful place to this empowered yeah. place. And that's where I see you are now. I mean, I see you doing all these interviews and different <laughs> things and sharing about the work that you're doing, but sharing your story. And that's where the real power is. And so I think each and every one of us, we need to find whatever our outlet is, right? Where whatever, mm -hmm. whether it's writing, whether it's having a conversation yeah, like you and I, but to find these opportunities to share our stories and to hear from others and, and find a way back to that empowered place. What is easier than just connecting with people and, and sharing something about yourself. You know, a lot of times we don't do it because we're afraid we're going to be judged or the shame that comes with it. And then when we do kind of put it out there, I think a lot of times we're really surprised by the response that we get back. And I think many times we find compassion um, given to us and understanding and not like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to you. But like, wow, you know, I have a friend who went through something similar. This is what it is. It means everything to know that you're not the only one out there in the world experiencing something like that. Yeah. We need to share our stories for that exact reason. And I know that your podcast and now the Hulu series is raising up an army of, of other people, not just women who are sharing their stories. So you released the podcast now, like I mentioned at the beginning, each season mm -hmm. is a different story, which I think is so cool and innovative. So you have, you're going into your third season of the yes. podcast, which is crazy. It's so crazy. It, it is. I just feel like. I worked really, really hard to rebuild my life. And now I'm starting to see this powerful medium, or I, I don't even know what to call it, um, just grow. You know, like you said, we're, we're telling our third story in a third season. And, you know, these stories, it's amazing at how many people can relate to them you know, whatever it might be, but it's just, there's so much power in it. Yeah. And every story leads to another, like, that's what I find about this podcast, even with one girl revolution is yeah. I'll interview somebody. Shannon is a great example, right? Mm -hmm. She was like, 
hey, you need to know Jennifer and da 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 da. And these are the things. Um, and, and if so Shannon I, tells you, you need to know, I know someone, I, anything, anything that Shannon, whatever has, that woman tells yeah, me, I'm I like, okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but that's, what's so important like about us sharing our stories too. And now that you're going into the third season, I can only, I'm so excited to see where the podcast goes from here. And then the Hulu series. So people can also watch the three part episode series, um, and which is now going into its second season yes. which is so exciting um jennifer i'd love to hear a couple this podcast is obviously all about stories but i would love to hear about maybe some of the feedback that you've gotten from people about through the podcast through the series maybe a story or two of someone who's been empowered by you sharing your own story yeah i've been I feel really, really lucky because I've gotten so much positive feedback from people just writing me that I don't know and they don't know me, just saying thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. That's all I need to hear because whatever piece of it resonated for them, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. We don't have to have gone through the exact same thing. It's if something resonates with someone and can help them know, okay, this gets better, or I will get through this, or, hey, I can make it on my own. I got this. There's one amazing woman um, that I connected with through Shannon, and I had met her, but she didn't know who I was and hadn't listened to my podcast, and she went home and listened to it and wrote to me after and this is somebody who was in a bad relationship, has a young child, and I don't believe she ever thought that she could leave her person, whether it was for financial, just moral support, they have a child together, and listening to the podcast changed something in her. It suddenly clarity happened for her, I believe, in her situation. And it took a little while, but she got herself and her child out of the situation. And we still stay in touch. And I am so proud of her. And I take no credit for it whatsoever. If if she heard something in my story that helped her, I am so glad because that's all I wanted to do. But what she did was she found the strength in herself she was given some courage by by somebody else saying you got it you got this and it it changed her life it changed the trajectory of her life and her child's life that's powerful that i mean i just i get kind of teary eyed talking about it because I never expected to have that kind of effect or my story to have that kind of effect, but it makes me feel so grateful that I did it. You know, it was, it wasn't easy and it's kind of embarrassing to be out there in a national spotlight or whatever for this kind of story, but everything I wanted to come from it came. And that was just to know that I help people. All they did was just listen and they just gained something out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the power. That's the power of us sharing. I think when we share the difficult things that we've experienced in life too, it gives other people just, there's like a different type of connection that happens, right? Yeah. I was talking about social media before where it's like, everybody's perfectly curated, but then I love when people are sharing like just rough things that they're going through. You know, maybe they have a sick parent or a sick child or they're sick themselves. Yeah. There's a woman that I followed that um, she was just this beacon of light and passed away from cancer at a really young age um, earlier this, this week. And just reflecting on her, like so many people, her sharing her cancer journey gave so many other oh. people yeah. the, the, permission really to speak, say like, Oh, I'm going through something too. Like, can I pray for you? Or let's pray together. Or yeah. um, I'm here for you, you know, people sharing her story. And so I think about that when I think about yours, Jennifer is 
you know, you sharing about how there are so many women that don't think they can do it. They don't think mm -hmm. they can get out of a situation. Um, and sometimes it's a relationship. Sometimes it's a, a terrible job situation. I mean, there are so many different things that all of us go through in our lifetime, but having you share your story and, and really it's giving other people permission and you never know what happens in, in that woman's life too, right? right? She has the courage to leave and then she's going to be able to say other to other people, to other women specifically, I did it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. That's and right. I love too, that now in this world, and we featured so many of these organizations and so many of these women too, now there are more and more resources, which I think is so important for women in those types of situations where they don't have to do it alone. You know, right. the woman on the, the podcast last week, she is, has a full-time job and she was like, I started realizing that women are in these abusive situations and she was abused throughout most of her life by her, by her family. And she started this nonprofit and she's like, people can call my cell phone number and whatever they need, I'm going to make sure that we figure out how to get it. And so I love that too, that there are more resources than any of us could even fathom for yeah. someone in those situations, somebody getting out of that. Well, and your podcast is a good example of that as well. You know, bringing on these people who've, who are storytellers and that can offer hopefully something to somebody out there. Again, we never know what it's going to be. You know, for a long time, I didn't think I was going to get out of it. I had fallen so far down into this deep hole and it took years and years to climb out of it. And I'm still not completely out, but definitely seeing the sunshine now, that's for sure. I am a firm believer, and I've said it before on this podcast, that a lot of the things that we experience, it's not like you heal and move on. It's almost like you carry the scar, right? Like you, your mm -hmm. wound heals, but you carry the scar mm -hmm. of the different things that you've gone through, different things that you've experienced. And I'm sure that that's kind of your story. You know, you've been through mm -hmm. hell and back and now sharing your story, it kind of helps you heal a little bit more. And I know that you've done so many different things to find healing, but we're just always carrying that scar with us. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it, it is. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm, I'm proud of myself for getting back out into the world and not just giving up, hiding away, putting my tail between my legs and just, you know, rolling up in a ball. Yeah. Of course I did that some days, but <laughs> we, Jennifer, we all need those days and yes. that's okay too. It's okay I to know. have these days where you're just, one of my friends calls it sitting in the suck. So it's uh... like, you're just sitting in the suck. Like I'm sitting in the suck right now. And so we'll text each other back and forth about it. Like, how are you doing? Like, oh, I'm sitting in the suck today. That's okay. All right, cool. Yes. What can I do? Can yep. I send you funny memes? Can I, um, send you pints of ice cream from Jenny's ice cream. <laughs> um, you know, what are the things that I can do, but that's okay for us to have those dark days yeah. or to have those moments where you're just sad, right? Like yes. missing, missing a, a family member that's passed on. I mean, there's just so many different things that can, or you're just feeling bad for yourself. Sometimes that's okay too. Like yes. we're allowed to have those moments, but yeah. to always make sure that we rise above it. And like you, I, I think that you can either be the, the victim of your story or the victim of things yes. that happen to you, or you can be the victor. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you don't go, go through the trenches and go through the difficult things, but we have the power to rise above it um, most of the time. But we're also yeah. allowed to have those those sit in the suck days too. I like that. I got to write that <laughs> down. Sit in the suck. I definitely have those days. <laughs> Watch In Tandem on One Girl Revolution's website or on our YouTube page. In Tandem is the inspiring story of Caitlin Cullen and her restaurant in Milwaukee, The Tandem. The Tandem does more than just serve food. The Tandem is a family, a community of support for everyone. The Tandem hires people that often no one else will hire, gives them an opportunity, trains them, and helps them find their way in this world. The Tandem is a support system for everyone who walks through their doors. But when COVID hit in March 2020, the Tandem story became even more inspiring. The Tandem closed their doors to customers and began solely feeding people in need during a time when so many people were struggling. Caitlin and the Tandem community fed over 115,000 people during the first year of the pandemic. Absolutely incredible. 
Watch and share in tandem today on our website at onegirlrevolution.com. Jennifer, I have a question for you just about, you know, you're doing all this incredible work. And I know that you're most days, I know that you, everybody has their days, but most days you're really standing in this empowered place and you're speaking up, you're sharing your story. Now the podcast and the series have continued to grow and evolve to include other people's stories. But the, these stories are also difficult. I know that you've got to have some really difficult days to be digging down. It probably brings up previous things that you found in your own story and painful moments that you found in your own stories you experienced. But if you could get to the very root of why you do what you do, what makes you wake up every single day and say, you know what, I need to keep doing this. Podcasts are a lot of work too. I can speak from experience. And like, what is it that makes you say, you know what, because you, I know you could easily go back to, you know, doing extreme home makeover or, you know, all these other shows that you worked on that are maybe a little less dark at times, but what Mm -hmm. is it, what is the root that, that makes you keep doing this? It's, it's just believing in the power of storytelling. And, you know, again, all of these topics and subjects were swept under the rug for so long. And a lot of times it was the victim that carried all the shame and the hurt and had to fix everything. And no longer, you know, if if we open up these conversations and we're really honest about what's happening, I just, that's, there's power in that. There's power and someone saying, oh, you went through that, well, listen, I went through something similar. I know that feeling of laying in the closet on the floor in a ball. I, I, I hear you. Sometimes that's just all you need is just to know that somebody else understands what you've gone through or what you're going through. Well, I know you have so many exciting things on the horizon, so much going on. I want to encourage everybody to follow, listen to the podcast, subscribe to the podcast, go on Hulu, watch the first season, keep your eyes out for the second season. But what are some other things going on in your life that you're excited about, Jennifer? What, what's on the horizon for you? You know, I, I'm a freelance producer, so sometimes I don't know what my next gig is going to be, but I always get excited about whatever opportunity comes up. So I'm looking forward to my next show that I'll go and do. I'm not sure what that is yet, but, um, the, the last one that I worked on this past fall was Vanderpump Villa, which is airing right now on Hulu, which is kind of ironic, but that's exciting to have that happening. So I might not be working on a show right now, but one of the ones I worked on is out and airing. So it kind of keeps my momentum going up a little bit. Well, I love reality TV and I've been seeing (laughs) all the ads pop up about Vanderpump Villa and I can't wait to watch it and all the craziness. I mean, we all need a little, a little craziness in our lives sometimes. And other people's drama is sometimes nice, a nice break from our own. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) well, Jennifer, I can't wait to keep following you. I'm going to put all of the um, links to your podcast, the links to Hulu, obviously, so people people can check it out. I'll put the trailer so people can check it out if they want to see more about you and your story. And I can't wait to follow everything that you have going on. But before I let you go, I always end this podcast on two questions. So I want to ask you, you are a one girl revolution. I am so in awe of you and everything that you do and you sharing your story And that's why I wanted to have you on the podcast because you're a one girl revolution. You're changing the world every single day. But who is a one girl revolution in your life? Who is a woman or girl that inspires you? So many, so many. You know, I think about some friends that have written books or put their stories out there as well. and, And they inspire me every day. But I think I would have to say my mom, because I watched this person who had three children under the age of eight years old, get divorced, and then suddenly have to make it on her own with three kids and started her own business that's still successful. And 
she did it. She didn't know how, but she figured it out and she made a way and she made it work. And maybe that's why I, I'm not afraid of a no. I'll put these crazy requests out there or I'll, you know, apply for a show that, you know, everyone's like, oh, you're never going to get that, you know, because my mom never stopped doing what she was doing because she was told no. And I think that's where I get it from. Well, what about you, you can I turn the tables? And oh, ask I mean, I would it? say my mom, I would say my, would mom. you? Yeah. Yeah. Because my mom is similar to your mom and, and not everyone has that relationship with their mom. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love this question so much because we obviously each have so many one girl revolutions in our lives. Like when I ask that question, most people are like, well, I might, I could write a whole book. About right. It. Right. Yeah. But the, the point is, is like even thinking about like, who are those people in our lives? And I love the multi-generational, you know, like mm -hmm. I've had women answer that question where it's like my grandmother and my yeah. mom and like, yeah. now my daughter, you know, like talking about like, we can learn so much from one another, mm -hmm. one another. And I just am a firm believer that every single woman and girl is a one girl revolution. And if yeah. we really believe that Jennifer, how different the world would look if each oh my gosh. saw our power and saw, you know, that we were as unique as our fingerprint, right. how differently we would live our lives. And so I learned that from my mom and she was a woman before her time in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't think that one girl revolution would exist without her. And actually, um, people that listen to this podcast, I did one episode with her, Jennifer, and I had to like, <gasps> But I, I'll send it to you because you would. Okay, I'm gonna listen but to it. For I sure. had to trick her into it because she never, like, she she would never like get up and stand up and speak in front of people or whatever. And I, one Christmas, I happened to be home. It was like probably maybe a year into the podcast, and I was like, I just need to capture this. And um, that's another part of these stories, and even the stories that you're doing too is like we're capturing history, right? Yes, because life changes so quickly and. It's so important for like, even, you know, this podcast and what you're doing is like, we need to capture history and you never mm -hmm. know down the line how it's going to affect people. But I end up tricking my mom into doing this podcast. I was like, <laughs> Hey, here, my mom loved Jameson. So I was like, here's a glass of Jameson, sit down, let's relax. And then when she was telling me some story, I like pulled out the two microphones and people <laughs> can like listen to it. But um, yeah, it's treasure, but I encourage everybody who's listening to, to yes. like find opportunities like that to record our loved ones because yes. life is too short and you never know when you might not be able to do that. So that's right. And I think what we learn from people who are older than us, that history, you know, I think we're evolving more and more and able to have difficult conversations more and more. But I don't think back in the day, like when my mom was younger or some of my friends who are even older. Um, so when they share their stories, I think they get excited about telling us what they went through and they see that things are changing a little bit now and it's mm -hmm. getting easier and better for women and we don't have to sweep all these uncomfortable topics under the rug anymore. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I do encourage people to have friendships with people of all ages. Mm -hmm. I do. I've got yeah. younger friends. I've got older friends and I just embrace it. I love every single piece of it. Yeah. We can learn so much from one another and yeah. yeah. Um, well, before I let you go, Jennifer, I always end this podcast on one question. So I'd like to ask you if you could leave women and girls around the world with one message, what would it be? <sighs> I don't know if it's going to be as profound as you might be looking for. That's okay. Um, I would encourage everyone to not be afraid to be vulnerable. It doesn't it's not having shame it's just being vulnerable and open and and sharing our stories with one another it's it's the best way you can support people i think it's because everybody can relate to something so i would just say it, it's time to speak out and, and not be afraid to do it because there's power in it. It doesn't make us weak at all. 
Well, there's so much power in your story. And I just want to encourage everybody to subscribe to the podcast. I'll put the link in the show notes and follow everything that you're doing and please share it too. I always say that the free and easy way to support anything is just to share it on your social media and you Mm -hmm. never know who might need to hear it too. So I encourage everybody who's listening to follow everything that you're doing. I can't wait to keep following everything that you're doing, Jennifer, but thank you so much. Well, you too, Kate. Oh, thank you. What you're doing is really wonderful too. Thank you. And and I hope you know that. I mean, I have to ask you what gets you up in the morning and wanting to continue with this. Um, I love your producer brain. I literally, (laughs) (laughs) it's it's the same as yours. It's it's that I believe that women's stories, I'm so passionate about the fact that women's voices and their stories deserve to be heard. Um, Mm -hmm. They deserve to be in the media. And sadly, and I understand it to some extent, you and I've talked about it where the media has a short, people have a short attention span. So they have 30 seconds to tell a story, but it's not always the authentic story or it's not always the full story. And so I love this medium of podcasts because it creates the space for women and girls to share their stories in the way that they want. And so Mm -hmm. I just continue to be so passionate about creating the spaces for women to share women and girls to share their life changing and world changing stories. And I just love women who are doing incredible things that sometimes people don't even know about. Yeah. And so yeah. revealing these amazing women, or maybe people think that there's some way because they live in a certain neighborhood, you know, we judge people all day long, right? Where all we're day like, long. Oh, so and so is from wherever, or the they, car they drive, right. the grocery store right. that they go to. Yeah. Their politics, their faith, mm-hmm. whatever the thing is, we judge people all day long. And so I love these spaces. And that's really what I've worked so hard for One Girl Revolution is to step into these conversations and say, I just want to get to know this person, right? Yeah. Like I can re- read all the things, I can watch all the interviews. Um, which I do, but I also want to just create the space for women and girls to share their stories. And they inspire me every single day. And there are so many stories just when I think I've done enough, Jennifer, which I know is going to happen for for you too. It's like, all right, cool. I can throw in the towel. Oh no, there are stories that need to be told. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know about this one. What about this? Right. So, um, yeah. So one girl revolution will continue and continue to grow. And I'm just so grateful to have you as a part of it now and be connected with you. And I can't wait to continue to support the great work that you're doing, but thank you so much for being on the podcast and thank you for all the incredible work that you do, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Kate, because you're doing incredible work as well. So thank you so much. I'm glad we're friends now. Same. same. (laughs) Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at One Girl Revo. That's the number one girl, R-E-V-O. And you can find more information on One Girl Revolution at onegirlrevolution.com. That's the number one girlrevolution.com.